Hey everyone, Widow here. On the night of Sunday, September 7th, 2025, we've got a real treat. A total lunar eclipse, also known as the Blood Moon. This will be the longest total lunar eclipse since 2022, with about 1 hour and 22 minutes of totality. If you live in Europe, Africa, Asia or Australia, you are in luck, you'll have a chance to see it. In this video, I'll explain what the Blood Moon is, who can see this one, why they don't happen every month, and I will give you some tips and gear suggestions for getting the best view. I'm Wido Ullemans and you are watching Wido's Astroform. A total lunar eclipse happens when the Sun, Earth and Moon line up perfectly, with Earth right in the middle. The Moon passes through Earth's shadow, which has two parts. The penumbra, which is the faint outer shadow where the Moon just looks slightly dimmer, and the umbra, which is the darker central shadow. When the Moon moves fully into the umbra, the magic happens and we get totality, where the Moon turns a deep red or orange. The red color comes from the sunlight bending through Earth's atmosphere. Blue light scatters away, and that's actually why the sky looks blue during the day, and the red wavelengths curve into the shadow and light up the moon. Now, this eclipse will look different depending on where you are. In many parts of Western Europe and West Africa, the moon will actually rise already in eclipse, which means you'll get that eerie red moon low on the horizon. For example, in the Netherlands, the partial eclipse begins at half past six, but the moon is still below the horizon at that point in time. It rises during totality around ten past eight, and you'll see it slowly brighten again as it leaves Earth's shadow. In Asia and Australia, you will see the whole eclipse higher in the sky, which means easier viewing. I've created an interactive map on my website so you can check out at what time the eclipse will happen at your location with an indication whether the moon is above the horizon during the different phases of the eclipse. You'll find a link in the video description below. So you might be wondering if the moon orbits the earth once a month, shouldn't we get an eclipse at every full moon? The answer to that is no, because the Moon's orbit is tilted about 5 degrees as compared to Earth's orbit around the Sun. So for most months the Moon passes slightly above or below Earth's shadow. A lunar eclipse only happens when the full Moon is near one of two special points in its orbit called nodes, where the Moon's path crosses the Earth's orbital plane. This only happens during eclipse seasons, which occur roughly once every six months. That's why total lunar eclipses are relatively rare. So the best part about a lunar eclipse is that it is completely safe to watch with the naked eye. No filters or glasses are needed, just look up and enjoy the view. That said, here are some tips for getting the best view. First, find a clear horizon. If the moon rises already eclipse at your location, you want to make sure you've got an open view towards the east. Hilltops, beaches or open fields are often perfect. Second, try to arrive a little bit early, giving your eyes time to adapt to the low light conditions. Third, try to bring some binoculars. Even a simple 7x50 pair will reveal richer colors and subtle shadings across the moon's surface. Fourth, check out the weather. Clouds can make or break your night, so have a backup location if possible. And fifth, mind the moon's path. It rises in the east and it sets in the west. So plan where you want to be, depending on your location, for the best view. You don't need any special equipment to enjoy the moon, but if you want to enhance your view, here are some great options. For binoculars, I would recommend something like the Celestron Skymaster Pro ED 7x50, which brings you bright and crisp views of the moon and is very easy to handhold. Also the Hawk Endurance ED Marine 7x50 is rocked and waterproof for tough conditions. If you're looking to telescopes, I always use my Celestron Edge HD 8 inch telescope for razor sharp details and close up views of the moon and for lunar photography. If you're looking for something cheaper, I would recommend the Skywatcher 8 inch Dobsonian telescopes, which have a big aperture for rich detail at great value. If you want to photograph the blood moon, you've got several options. If you think about using your smartphone, I'd recommend you also use a tripod for stability. You want to enable night mode or pro mode if you have that on your phone, and you want to set your ISO to about 400 to 800 
uh, with a shutter speed from about a quarter to one second during the full lunar eclipse. If you're going to use your DSLR or mirror mirrorless camera, I would recommend also using a zoom lens from 300 to 600 millimeters focal length. And for totality, I would set my ISO to about 800, my F ratio to about F 6.3, and my shutter speed from half to one second exposures for a good image. For brighter partial phases, you'll need a much shorter exposure time to avoid overexposing the bright side of the moon. If you are looking to attach your camera to a telescope, you can of course use your telescope as prime focus photography for high resolution pictures. You could also use a smart telescope like the Dwarf 3 or the Seastar S30 or S50 to capture the blood moon. More details are in the video description below. For composition ideas, you can think about creating these moonrise foregrounds, especially in Western Europe and West Africa, where the moon will be low on the horizon. You can then frame the red moon against buildings, mountains or trees. If you then also use a 300 to 600 mm zoom lens, you can make the moon look huge behind a distant subject. You can also create time-lapse sequences where you take a frame once every 10 or 20 seconds during the eclipse, making a smooth eclipse video. So there you have it. The September 7 to 8, 2025 total lunar eclipse is a must-see for everyone. Whether you are using your eyes, binoculars or a telescope, it's a beautiful and completely safe celestial show. Mark your calendar, plan your viewing spot, and if you can, bring some friends or family to share this special moment. I'll be out there with my own gear, and if weather is kind, I'll have some images to share with you afterward. Clear skies and happy eclipse watching.